Our star system passes and interacts with other star systems, and has done so since its formation. Over the history of the solar system, numerous other stars, we don't know how many, have passed near to the Sun. Indeed, during the very early days when the Sun was still within its now dispersed birth cluster, it would have interacted with other star systems so regularly that it's possible for the Sun to have captured a planet from another sibling star, and that undiscovered planet may still be out there in the outer solar system. Perhaps planet 9, 10, or 11 for that matter, all hypothesized with some evidence, might be captures from other star systems, or even a captured rogue planet originally from almost anywhere in the galaxy. The planet 9 is thought more likely to be an ejected gas giant core from the early solar system, which would no doubt be equally interesting and would provide untold amounts of information on the formation, evolution, and even the interiors of the gas giant planets. But also captures would provide a wealth of information on how our own solar system might to some degree be different in its geology, specifically its isotope ratios. There would be truly alien worlds within our grasp without having to cross the distances of interstellar space. The idea of the sun interacting with other stars of its birth cluster has another dimension. It's plausible that life on Earth arrived here through panspermia through the exchange of interstellar meteorite material with another one of the sun's siblings in the early days, meaning that life in the solar system may not actually be native to it. In principle, at least it's possible. The mounting evidence is showing that abiogenesis really was likely a product of the organic chemistry of Earth's volcanic hot springs. It's probably more likely originally indigenous to here, and maybe potentially Mars, and less possibly interstellar. Abiogenesis is shaping up to be less of a complicated process than was once suspected. More on that in a future video. But that process of stellar close encounters with the Sun have never stopped, nor will it as the galaxy is dynamic with stars moving and passing by each other in an ongoing process. In most cases, past stellar encounters aren't traceable. The information is lost over time, like the movements of billiard balls in a game. And it just isn't there past a certain point. But some have been recent enough for us to be able to tell. An example is a red dwarf known as Schultz's star that passed within a light year of the sun just 70,000 years ago, well within the Oort cloud. But it remains possible that stars could pass in principle much closer than that, and this could prove to be a future problem for Earth. Earth's real future as it will play out is uncertain. It's always been assumed that everything would remain relatively stable, and Earth would get swallowed up by the sun during its red giant phase. As poetic as that may sound, it is after all Earth joining with the mother sun that gave it life to become a part of it forever. But more recent work suggests maybe not, and that the red giant phase may not quite reach out to Earth, in which case the planet ends up a truly baked cinder with a red giant taking up most of its sky until quieting down to a cooling white dwarf, once again freezing Earth solid. Though as that process plays out, if we don't get swallowed, you have to wonder. While it would not likely have any water left, having long ago boiled away and baked off, probably along with the atmosphere, might Earth in the far future re-enter the shrinking habitable zone of the cooling sun, if only for a short time. I've never seen anything on that in the literature, but it's an interesting thought anyway. Tell me what you think in the comments below. Maybe both Earth and the Moon, presuming it's still there, might be equally barren and airless, yet nevertheless warm worlds once again, after the age of heat that's coming. But there is now another option. Recent work in France has shown that sometime within the next billion years, very likely when Earth is no longer habitable and the Sun's habitable zone has moved outward, due to the sun's luminosity increase and continued evolution and subsequent broiling of Earth, which we probably won't avoid before the red giant phase, there seems to be a 1% chance of a very close encounter with another star that might make things interesting. Not a huge number, but a significantly non-zero one. It would need to happen about 100 AU from the sun or closer, or at least 100 times further than the orbit of the Earth. The passing star would need to be very close to mess significantly with the orbits of the planets. But a number of scenarios can happen here. First is just the evolution of the solar system. 
It's been known for a while that the real target of getting ejected from the inner solar system is Mercury as it ages. Models of the solar system's evolution show that Mercury could get tossed out even without a stellar encounter, and may even be put on a collision course with Venus. Imagine what that would look like. Two planets visible in the night sky colliding with each other right before our far future post-human eyes. But with stellar encounters, there may be different possibilities, according to the modeling, and one of them is that Earth might get saved if the right things happen. Earth could be moved in such an encounter to a further out, migrated orbit within the habitable zone of the red giant sun, thus potentially preserving something like it currently is, but that comes with a whole lot of uncertainty and caveats. The problem is the encounter would need to happen at exactly the right time and exactly the right distance. The odds of that are extremely low, less than Earth getting tossed into the sun or thrown out into the icy reaches of the Oort cloud, making it conceivably someday the most distant planet in the solar system, far beyond the current orbit of Pluto. Though it's very unlikely only Earth would be affected, the other planets too would likely be in disarray, if Earth ends up that way, so it's an open question. We'd certainly still have our planets though, at least most of them but in radically altered orbits, in turn receiving radically different amounts of solar energy than their former selves once had. They would not look like the planets we know anymore. Rather, they would become evolved forms of them adapting to their new conditions. Another big question here is the elephant in the room of the night sky, the moon. What would such an interstellar disruption do to its orbit? It could be flung away from Earth, or alternatively, in short, it could hit us. That's probably a life ender for Earth. Maybe even the microbes might not be able to make it past that one. Even if the golden scenario happened that overall saved the planet, we'd stay in the habitable zone. But having your moon hit you is worse than a dinosaur killer asteroid. The resultant post-collision Earth might be significantly larger and moonless as a result. Other options include, again conditionally, Venus or Mars falling into the sun, Uranus or Neptune getting ejected from the solar system entirely to either wander the cosmos for eternity or get captured and become members of another star system entirely. But whatever happens, if you could still stand on the surface of this far future Earth and look at the night sky a billion years from now and see the passage of another star disrupting the solar system, you would see that star very much like a planet like the Pluto of today sees the sun, a very bright pinpoint something like Venus in the night sky as we see it, but without the planet's obvious motion. The pinpoint would grow brighter over time to rival the current brightness of the moon. It might for a time be the brightest object in the night sky at some point, though that can get short-circuited if there were a bright supernova happening or great comets being disrupted from the Oort cloud by the chaos of the passing star and sent careening into the solar system to dominate the skies, perhaps in great numbers once again delivering water to the inner solar system. That too, I have not yet seen covered in the literature. In the short term, we will see stellar encounters. 1.3 million years from now, the orange type K star, perfect for colonization if it has any planets, Cleese 710 will pass within the Oort cloud, though it currently is 63 light years away. This is in principle close enough to send a hail of comets our way, though it would take a very long time for them to get here. This is a danger with Schultz's star and its pass, in that the comets disrupted by that are just now due to arrive, and there are candidates for that. Oddly, about the time of Oumuamua's pass, there were actually a number of candidates for objects that were either disrupted by Schultz's star, or could even be interstellar objects deposited by it. It's at least possible anyway that comets from Schultz's star system, which is a red dwarf with a brown dwarf companion, may be present in the solar system and might present to us objects from another, known star system. Also oddly enough, it's possible that in the distant past, 70,000 years ago, someone on Earth saw it. Red dwarfs are very dim. It's unlikely that at its normal brightness, it would have been visible. And indeed, it's possible that there are close-by red dwarfs in our local area of the galaxy that we haven't discovered yet because of their dimness. But red dwarfs flare, and it's possible that for a time, a dim new star might have appeared to early humans every so often that would have been noticeable. In short, that with all of our astronomy in modern times, venturing into space, 
we are not the humans that have been closest to another star system. It was those alive 70,000 years ago. Thanks for listening. I am futurist and science fiction author John Michael Godier, currently not happy with close stellar encounters. You'd think the sun would be a better driver and not be taking us so close to various red dwarfs and things, and instead steer clear. Not gonna happen. We're at the mercy of the worst auto driver there is. Very careless star, especially with its Zord cloud. And be sure to check out my books at your favorite online book retailer and subscribe to my channels for regular in-depth explorations into the interesting, weird, and unknown aspects of this amazing universe in which we live.